So far we have been looking at 1D maps, so let's now spice things up a little bit and move to two-dimensional maps. So for the 1D case, we had this very simple model system, um, which was the logistic map. So where we had f of x is equal to a x1 minus x. And this was a very simple looking equation, but still very interesting in the sense that all the behavior that you also find in much more complicated looking equations, you can also find in this much more simple system. So it's a bit like the biologist studying a fruit fly, the 1D map people are studying the logistic map. So the question is, what are the 2D uh, people studying? Well, they're studying the Enon uh, map, which is, of course, a function of x and y. So you plug in two numbers, x and y, and you also get out two numbers, the first of which is a minus x squared plus by, and the second number is x. So y and x change places here. So what we're going to do in this video is take a leisurely stroll to the whole landscape of different uh, members of this uh, Enon family and see what types of behavior that we can, uh, can observe. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to pick two parameter values, namely a is 1.28 and b minus 0.3. And then we can observe that if we calculate, for example, the, the orbits of the origin, so this is a diagram where we have x and, and, and y, um, the, the origin will end up in a period two point, and the two points of this period two point are over here. So eventually it will cycle between these two points in a stable orbit. Now what I've plotted here in white is the basin of attraction of that period two point. So all these points in white here will eventually end up over there. The points which are in black, they run away towards infinity. Okay, so this is the behavior we have for this particular family member. And you can also observe that the boundary between the black region and the white region is actually pretty smooth, so nothing uh, spectacular. But what we're now going to do is we're going to slightly increase the value of A and see what happens. So how does this evolve if we have, for example, for A 1.4? And then we end up with a completely different looking picture. So again, we have the situation that there's a period two points. So now the two points are over there. And we've also plotted uh, the points in white that end up at that uh, period two point and the points in black that run away towards infinity. But now something very interesting happens, namely the boundary between these two regions is much more complicated. It's no longer smooth. Um, it, it looks very, yeah, very interesting here. And let's see, for example, what happens if we zoom in uh, this particular region. Do we then eventually, if we keep on zooming in, get something that's, again, smooth? Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. If we zoom in, we get something that looks just as complicated as the original picture that we started out from. And if we keep on zooming in, for example, if we zoom in over here, we get a figure that looks like that. So it seems that the complexity never disappears. You have this infinite layering of uh, alternating white and, uh, and black uh, layers. So the boundary is no longer smooth. Actually, you have something which is self-similar. And a self-similar structure is a structure like this, where if you keep zooming in, you get something that looks more or less similar than the original picture that you started out from. So it doesn't need to be identical. It's actually self-similar, just as long as it's roughly uh, similar, um, then you have what's called this fractal structure, this self-similar structure. So a little bit of a hand-waving argument, but, but I guess you see what, uh, what, what, what we mean here. Uh, by the way, a small confession, if you look carefully at this diagram and that diagram, you might notice that they're not really similar, they're actually identical. And this is simply because I cheated, because, okay, this took a while to calculate here, and then I thought, okay, this is going to take even longer to calculate this graph over here, so let's just cheat a little bit and put uh, just a copy there. So I was a bit lazy here. Uh, the actual picture looks subtly different, but again, same message applies. It's still a complicated structure and you can keep zooming in indefinitely and it will never uh, get, uh, get simple. So very important here, fractal structures, self-similar structures, uh, they, they happen a lot in these more dimensional um, dynamical uh, systems. Okay, let's uh, continue looking at a final member of the uh, Enon family and let's flip the sign of B and see what happens then. And it turns out that if you calculate the orbit of the origin, let's say, and we plot after transient phenomenon all of the different points that that orbit visits, then we end up with something like this. 
So this is a different picture than the one we had earlier. Okay, it's still x-axis here and, and y-axis there. But what's depicted here is uh, what happens to the orbits after you discard the transient phenomenon. So rather than ending up at a period two point, you get this very complicated chaotic structure. Uh, and again, here, this is a fractal, a self-similar structure. So if you zoom in on a part of this structure over here, you again get this very complicated structure with like lines folding over themselves at infinitum. So self-similar uh, fractal uh, structure here. Um, by, by the way, something which is very important to realize is what exactly this represents. So for example, if I say to you, okay, what this represents is if you have a certain um, initial point, and let's say a point uh, over here, which is pretty close to the, the, the um, chaotic attractor here, what will happen if you apply the map is that this thing will just um, continuously trace out all of the lines in this, uh, in this diagram. Is this what is happening here? So pause the video and think about this. So of course this is not at all what is happening here because there's no continuous evolution. Remember what we're dealing with are discrete maps. So you plug in a certain point and you might end up in a completely different location. So there's no notion of continuous evolution here. So if you start from example, for example, from an initial point over here, which is not really close to the orbit, eventually it will end up closer and closer to the, the orbit. Um, so if you discard a transient phenomena, and then if you then keep on following the orbits, it could be that, okay, for example, you have a point over here, then you might end up over there. And then for the next iteration, you jump to here, and then you could jump to there, and so on and so forth. And um, if you have a different initial condition, so if you start up, for example, over here, then you might, because it's a chaotic system, end up somewhere completely different. So the orbits, again, might end up looking completely different. Uh, but the important message here is that if you keep on plotting enough of these points, then eventually they will all merge into this very beautiful uh, chaotic attractor, the so-called Enon attractor. So fascinating, right?